So you operate from uh, here. King, Kingsland Observatory. Kingsland Observatory. So we're in what's called Kingsland, mm -hmm. which is uh, near Boyle in County Roscommon. Okay. And the reason why we're here is because the light there's a lack of light pollution. Yeah. Okay. We need that lack of light pollution in order to image faint objects. Okay. Uh, we have two tracking platforms. There's one over there, yeah. and then there's one over that side, which is about 150 meters apart. And then we have um, an all-sky camera system, which is made up of 11 cameras. It's mm -hmm. been operating now for the last 15 years. Yeah. And the idea is, of course, we pick up aircraft, helicopters, and everything else, but we're interested in anything else that's unusual. Yes. Because uh, uh, the general Boyle area and Lock Key is a very active area for anomalous objects. Yeah. And so in terms of you, your cameras catching stuff, have you recorded yes, anonymous? Yes, we've recorded as well. Yeah. And we have um, published material in, okay. uh, to do with all this. And are the objects similar? Are they, I mean, are they light objects? Do they, are uh, they? They're mainly, uh, mainly balls of light. Okay. And the, the balls of light can be moving around in erratic ways which doesn't actually fit um, any atmospheric phenomena that we know of. So we've been doing this a good while. How many times, have, how many recordings would you have had over a period of time in this area? Is it, can you say even? Uh, we've had about 20 roughly. 20. Of unusual ones. The one that we did focus on there back in the 90s was that uh, based on 13,000 um, uh, multiple witness sightings around the world going back to the 1880s. Uh, we put this into a special program that we developed uh, which had a number of failures by the way yeah. <laughs> because uh, we were trying to think well how, you know how, how would all this uh, work but anyway w we, we discovered that um, these objects appear to be on orbital tracks around the earth mm. and we discovered 660 tracks that, I, uh, that intersected through the equator. And lo and behold, there's an intersection of some of these tracks in this particular area. And that's what the reason why I relocated to this area, because mm. I saw this as an amazing laboratory mm. for this. And sure enough, we've actually got the results from it as well. Mm. Uh, so we were, by using these um, uh, computerized timing graphs, we were able then to uh, work out windows of opportunity when these events would take place and sure enough we tested the theory out on a number of occasions and in fact we had we've had hundreds of uh, witnesses you know we put it out there back in the 90s for others to see all this mm. people have seen what you know this and uh, so it confirmed yes that it fits this theory all right mm -hmm. but does it mean it's spacecraft we we just don't know yeah okay you know? so this is again hypothetical yeah from, from our best extraction of uh, you know evidence that, that you had yeah. yeah is that they're using a stealth supercraft mm -hmm. up in the upper stratosphere mm -hmm. right but it's on one of these orbital tracks and what it does is it ejects a number of probes into our lower atmosphere and this is why people see UFOs mm -hmm. these are the probes but they come in different sort of forms and they're all monitoring devices. Do you have a visual that, you, you know, in the same way you got confirmation, you don't, uh, you don't have well, anything? Well, we're just doing with balls of light. Like balls of light, they're, okay. They're rather like um, Venus flying around. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a weak area for us, that one. Mm. That's why 10, 12, 13 years ago, we um, I decided to, to ramp it up to get onto the next step. Yeah. That, and that was to do with ETI. Our main focus is SETI, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, because mm -hmm. it's part of the astronomical work we're doing here. Yeah. So we've actually developed um, instrumentation that operates uh, in faster than light communications. So in other words, you could literally have a two-way communication with an extraterrestrial civilization. I don't expect them to be using radio and microwave. Um, if they've expanded from their star system, as a civilization, in other words, gone to other star systems and planets, they're probably not using conventional rocketry like we're using at the present time. Yeah. They're m most likely using faster than, faster than light travel. 
all right? So when you're applying faster than light travel, your communications doesn't operate in the electromagnetic spectrum. Yeah. It can only operate um, uh, using faster than light communications. And this is, comes around to what we're doing, is develop, we've developed this instrument now, it's taken us 10 years working doing this. Yeah. And uh, we've made the breakthrough last year, we've got it working. Uh, and uh, uh, so we're, I'm optimistic from a statistical point of view that we may get the first contact in the world actually. So what we're looking for is, um, uh, is eavesdropping on their communications because we're assuming they're using superluminal communications, that is FT, faster than light communications. Um, and for our instrumentation, we can actually eavesdrop on that communication. So the communications could be between two spaceships, space stations, it could be from one planet to the other in, in, their, um, in their star system, that is. Uh, it's a great ambition. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's um, what do you think? Like, it is pretty phenomenal in the sense Well, of it's more than phenomenal. Yeah. You're, you're, you're not dealing with just a, oh, another discovery that's just made and it's submitted to with a paper. Yeah. You're talking about a game changer here. You're talking yeah. about the discovery of the millennium, mm. not the discovery of the year. Yeah. Because that has, and I am well aware of this, the ramifications on this are huge. Mm. But, um, Okay. Look, I, I'm a scientist. I just have to do. I'm doing it this way, and okay, I might be a maverick in it, the whole thing. But you know, history has shown a lot of breakthroughs have happened with mavericks. Yeah. Right? So you, you've been looking into this for 26 years. Mm. What would be your eureka moment? What's your? I'm going to open up the bottle of champagne and go to sleep tonight. And you know, I might have a sleep on in the morning. Number one. Yeah. My main focus is contact, mm -hmm. technologically speaking. That would be the first Eureka moment. The second one is to get the confirmation through the United Nations. Well, we wish you the best of luck. Yeah. We'd be looking ourselves Thanks. up to the skies a little bit yeah. more, but um, yeah, we wish you the best of luck. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. No, it's, been it's been very interesting, very informative, and uh, very exciting. So. Whoa. Whoa. Like our page, why don't you?